Okay, so I have something really cool I want to show you. It's called pattern cutting, and it's something that's really useful in the shop. If you look at this, we call this just a turkey fan display, and in our area, a lot of people like to turkey hunt, and then they like to display this stuff. And so, if you if you think about making each of these parts, you in the old school, you'd simply mark it out and then cut cut it with a bandsaw and then shape it and so forth. And so you can see that there's one, two, three, four different parts that make this piece. And so then on the back, we just put a keyhole and then um, hang it on the wall. So I'm going to show you how we can pattern cut this part. So this is an example of pattern cutting. And what you see um, on the V-carve screen is uh, the turkey fan display and the cutout for each of these parts. You can imagine that if you were to try to cut each of these out and shape it with a scroll saw or a bandsaw, that might be a bit of an ordeal. But if you use a pattern cutting tool, this is a very fast way to make these parts uh, very quickly. And so um, what, what you start with here is um, an 18 by 12 panel that's three quarters of an inch thick. It's centered in this origin. And so I'll go ahead and, and use this particular one. So basically, again, all you really do is just select the vectors that you want to carve. And we're going to create a profile tool path. And so when you go to a profile tool path, what you do is you have to use an end mill. And it will, it's the tool that's actually going to cut it out. I use a quarter of an inch upcut um, bit. And what I want to do is to cut on the outside of the vector. And so you could switch it to the inside if you wanted to cut like a heart out or something like that. Um, out of a, maybe a backboard or something like that, or you could cut right directly on the line. Uh, but in this case, we want to cut on the outside of each of these pieces. And the other thing that we want to do is to go ahead and add some tabs. Now, what tabs do is they hold the part. And you can imagine if the tool comes around this part and it cuts it free, then what can happen is as it cuts maybe right here and goes to make its last cut, the part will come loose and then the, it will fall against the bit and the bit will have a kickback and it will cut a chunk out of it. And so if we add tabs, um, it will hold the thing in position. And so in this particular case, I want to have a tab every five inches of cut. I want to have at least one tab and a maximum of 10. And so I'll go ahead and add tabs. And so what you can see then is that each one of these is a little tab of wood uh, that is going to hold this pattern in position when I go ahead and make the cut. So I'm going to close this and make, make a calculation. And so at this point then I can go ahead and preview the toolpath. And so now you can see the tabs that are left. So this is a very, very powerful tool for doing mass production and having consistency in the work. You can imagine if this piece were to get loose without this tab, that the bit would just chew it up and it would be, it's hard on the tool also. And so I'm going to ahead and close this so that you can see it. So anyway, I hope you like that. I hope you find that interesting. I have a few more things I'd like to show you. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, number one, I've modified my clamp for uh, my carving machine, my CNC Shark. And what I've done is I've just made this sliding vise uh, so that you can, you can move it back and forth right on there and not have to do that whole hold down thing. Also, on the hold down, it's a little bit of a problem because if it gets away, it's more likely to, to get into your aluminum hold downs. And so this thing's kind of sacrificial. It's made out of wood. The only thing that would really be a problem is if it got into that metal fastener. The other thing is that I fixed this across the back and basically what I use to keep things from moving is just double face tape. And so it's that thick double face tape and it kind of has a tacky surface and but yet kind of a rigid surface. And so once you get a little bit of sawdust up against it, it really works good uh, to put the wood in it. Now when we're pattern carving, we want to hold the part up off the table. So I've got three pieces here, sacrificial pieces, so that if the bit were to go down through the piece of wood, and I'll show you this in a moment, then it would get into this sacrificial piece and not into my table. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and clamp it. Now I already put an X in the center for the zero, zero, zero uh, of, the, of the machine so we can zero it out. I'll put it on top of these sacrificial pieces. 
and then I'll bring the clamp up. And this is where you have to really apply some uh, pretty serious pressure uh, to this machine to, to clamp it because you don't have like a screw or anything. So I'll go ahead and I'm pretty much leaning with all my weight uh, to hold this piece in position as I go ahead and bring the pressure up. And then it's really, really tight in there. So the next thing I need to do is to switch. I need to switch these bits out. So presently I have a 60 degree V bit, which I think is a lot better than a 45 degree V bit. And I'll just, I've got the, the, uh, the machine is turned off. And so I'll just run the screws up manually, which I think is a lot easier than using the jog function. Okay, so I've got a one quarter inch upcut spiral carbide bit in there. And this is what we're going to use to go ahead and make the pattern cut. So the last thing that I will do is zero it out. And when you see the light come on, that's when we'll go ahead and start the cut. Okay, so that's cool how that cuts that out. You could just imagine how your ability to create parts accurately uh, is just multiplied and the speed of it is just so much faster. And so now all we need to do is just trim these out with the bandsaw. If we didn't cut all the way through there, but it's no problem. I'll trim those out with the bandsaw and just be back with the pieces after I hit them with a the sander.